Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here today and in this video I'll be painting this lovely glowing sunset river scene for you in watercolour. I'm beginning today with a piece of Milford brand watercolour paper, 100% cotton, cold press. I draw it taped onto my board and laid flat with a faint pencil outline already drawn, uh, ready to begin. This is the photograph that I'm working from today. This is a photo I took myself at the River Cookmere in Seaford, UK. Uh, it's a lovely photograph, but I decided that instead of the uh, sort of natural neutral colours, I wanted to paint in a vibrant glowing sunset over the top of that lovely sweep of river. Um, so what I've done is I've got my pencil outline ready to go and I'm beginning with the sky so I've got my board flat and I'm beginning by putting a wash of clean water over the sky section which I'm going to paint wet and wet. As you can see I began with some raw sienna and a large mop brush uh, just marking out a space for the sun and then beginning to loosely paint in my colour around it. To uh, boost up that uh, golden glow, those yellow tones, I'm now adding in some gamboge hue, which is, uh, as you can see, a lovely bright sort of sunny buttercup yellow colour. And now that I've got my paler colours in, I'm going to begin layering some more sort of sunset tones over this. So this is some uh, cadmium orange hue. Uh, that I've just put on here, which again is a lovely uh, bright sort of true orange coupled with a little bit of burnt sienna here, which is a slightly uh, softer orange, a sort of a more uh, a duller, slightly rustier colour. As you can see, uh, painting wet and wet is allowing all these sort of different orange and yellow tones to blend really nicely on the paper, so we're getting a nice uh, sort of bright layered sunset here. And now I'm adding in some Windsor Red, which is a really sort of deep red, and that's adding some deeper tones into the sky. You can see here I'm using it quite brightly, but also pulling the colour around and allowing it to soften uh, and become a little more rusty coloured as it meets and uh, sort of mixes in with the uh, yellow and orange tones that we've already got in the sky. And while you're working wet and wet like this, you can add really as many or as few colours as you like. This is some more cadmium orange you can see here uh, that I'm just putting in to really sort of boost those rich sort of glowing orange tones in the sky. Uh, I just wanted a really sort of feisty, fiery looking sunset uh, overlaid by some darker clouds which I'm just beginning to add in now. Uh, again, just using my mop brush here coming in quite loosely with a dark uh, neutral colour that I've mixed up on my palette with um, some ultramarine blue, uh, a little Windsor red and some burnt umber just to sort of dull that purple colour down a little bit. Uh, and you can see I'm just stuffing it on quite loosely uh, in parts, concentrating it around the sort of top left and coming down towards the sun. And then I'm just going to streak a few sort of hazy light clouds along the bottom of the skyline here just by using the tip of the mop brush really loosely uh, and because we're painting wet and wet you can see that colour already starting to diffuse into the rest of the sky when we're getting clouds with lovely soft edges. It's at this point you can layer up basically as many clouds as you like. You can see here I'm going for quite a moody looking sunset with quite a few heavy low hanging clouds. But if you only wanted um, a much more minimal approach to putting in clouds then um, obviously use a lighter touch than this and just um, stuff in a few along the horizon line perhaps uh, to uh, just to emphasise that lovely glow of the sunset. And here I'm just going to show you a little trick. Uh, if you're losing your sun, you can see my white is disappearing here, just a little bit of tissue wrapped around your forefinger uh, and you can just dab out some of the paint and leave that clean white space which uh, is now drier than the rest of the, um, 
of the sty because you've used the th your tissue to dab out some paint um, so the paint won't continue to leach into it that little area will remain white uh, and it's just a handy little trick for making sure you get that bright white sun peeping through the clouds back there now at this point if like me you end up with lots of uh, very wet paint and water on your paper you can move your board around and tip and tilt it so that the paint moves and begins to run in whatever direction you want to emphasize those clouds you can see here i hope that i've pulled my board up and i'm actually holding it with my hand vertically it's uh, difficult to show on the camera but you can see how quickly and how dramatically that paint is running so what you can also do is turn your board uh, sideways and leave it to dry at an angle so your paint diffuses down and creates even more cloud cover which is what I've done here and you can see that I've actually ended up with this really dark sweep of cloud uh, on the left side that was because that was the direction my water was flowing as uh, I left my painting to dry uh, and it was pulling the paint down and it created that soft sort of wash of cloud quite heavily on that left side which uh, I really really like um, it's a really fun way to paint as well letting the water do half the work uh, during the drying time and you always end up with a result that's unique but now that that sky is fully dry and I'm really happy with it uh, I'm just painting in the river now I'm using uh, some gamboge hue and some cadmium orange hue uh, to reflect the main colours that are in the sky uh, and I'm actually being really careful here you can see I'm doing some dry brushing with my small brush uh, I just want to keep some of the white paper in this broader stretch of river to uh, act as the uh, reflected light glinting off the surface of the water still coming from that lovely bright white sun uh, and the best way to do this is not to pick up too much paint or water on your brush uh, and you can see I'm just sort of lightly stuffing it along the surface of my paper to get the, um, the dry brush marks getting that little glitter of, of white peeping through the colour as we work for this technique uh, it does help to be using uh, rough textured or cold press watercolour paper as the rougher the surface is the more easily it will pick up uh, those small amount of colour from the dry brushing uh, you can do it on hot press paper but it is um, a lot harder and it often uh, for me at least doesn't turn out quite so well so I'm using a cold press paper here uh, and you can see that the uh, slightly uh, more uneven uh, grain of the paper is picking up that paint really nicely and we're getting that little glint of uh, sun on the surface of the water So once that dry you can start adding in your darker tones and here you can see I'm beginning to add in this thin line of darker horizon just peeping over the, um, the stretch of river disappearing into the distance there and to add this I'm using some burnt umber and a flat brush to just loosely pull in this uh, finer line uh, up to the point where it broadens out uh, where the river sweeps round into a curve and I'm using burnt umber for this because I wanted a nice sort of rich dark colour that was really going to um, complement the, um, the warm colours that I've already used in the sky and burnt umber is uh, such a lovely sort of rich uh, brown colour that I thought it would work really really nicely against the yellow and orange tones that I've already got here and of course this sort of thing uh, is entirely subjective uh, if you've got a colour that you prefer sort of a sepia van dyke brown neutral tint anything like that would all work really well here uh, if you prefer how it looks against how your sky turned out because <laughs> no two skies really turn out the same uh, using this technique and of course you are very free as well to use uh, entirely different colours to paint this sunset as well sunsets come in so many different tones and varieties that uh, you can pretty much use whatever you like <laughs> and they'll, uh, they'll still turn out beautiful so just uh, to put in the land use whatever darker tone uh, is going to complement your sky the best And 
you can see I've just uh, switched to a smaller brush here to start filling in uh, a little bit of uh, this detail, pulling that paint across. Um, this is a size 4 round um, synthetic brush from uh, Princeton's Neptune range, which is a lovely and versatile little brush. You can see as well that I'm beginning to add in some uh, darker tones here as well. This is actually using a little bit of ultramarine, which I used for the clouds as well. Uh, mixed with burnt umber, ultramarine creates a lovely sort of rich neutral tone, as you can see here, that I'm just sort of pulling along the bottom of the riverbank uh, and just really uh, trying to get a really nice looking uh, diffusion, wet and wet, on that, uh, on that right side. It's uh, further away from us, the viewer, so it doesn't need to be uh, sort of super detailed um, and rich in sort of lots of fussy little detail, but it does just need to look like more than just um, a little sort of brown block. So you can see here I'm just adding in uh, the rise of a distant hillside uh, and now just starting to uh, make some loose sort of rough marks to uh, give a bit of interest, a little bit of texture and contrast into this uh, side of the riverbank. And now whilst that's drying, I'm just going to repeat uh, exactly the same process to begin to add some colour and detail to the land on this left side of the uh, river. So again, starting with the flat brush and some burnt umber and just getting that uh, rough line in there going along that stretch of river that's disappearing into the distance uh, before coming in with um, a little bit more water and I'm just going to fill in uh, this white space here on the left side with uh, lots of nice uh, rich colour. As you can see, plenty of water uh, and basically just a base here of burnt umber um, to fill in this side of the river that has the fence on it. I don't want it to be um, too dark but I do want some interest so basically I'm going to do a base of burnt umber and then add in some more sort of neutral darks uh, just exactly the same way as I did on the uh, other side of the river. You can see there is now drying really nicely. And so you can see I've got lots of lovely water there. Um, so um, adding in some more colours wet and wet um, is going to be uh, no trouble at all. And so you see here I'm just adding in the last sweeps of bolder colour. I've just used some ultramarine and some permanent rose uh, to actually darken down and just sweep really simply my flat brush across creating some texture. And now this is important, this is a lovely little touch. Um, whilst it's still wet, I'm spattering in some really rich colour, just very delicately with my small brush. This is Gambo's Yellow, only watered down a little bit so the paint's really nice and rich and it actually stays really well on this uh, watered down background. And that's how we get these lovely, loose little yellow flowers popping out of this riverbank. And now doing exactly the same uh, with some permanent rose to add a little bit of pink as well. 
So we want to let those dry naturally so we get those soft uh, diffused edges to the flowers. So whilst it's drying I'm just going to add some reeds and grasses to my riverbank and I'm doing this using my uh, sword liner brush. Uh, just because it has such a fine point it's perfect for this sort of delicate work but any sort of fine pointed brush would work well for this uh, touch as well. Uh, round brush, flat brush, riddle brush, or whatever you're happy with, <laughs> whatever you're comfortable using. I'm going to add some uh, little reeds poking out of the uh, surface of the river as well before moving on to just add a bit of texture uh, and a bit of extra grass to the far bank as well, which you can see uh, is drying really nicely. Now this part really doesn't have to be uh, too precise, uh, you just want some nice loose uh, lines to just create the impression of some lovely uh, riverbank reeds and grasses and rushes but uh, if you do add them into the water like I have then don't forget to pop the reflections in as well. And that's really easily done, just use the tip of your brush and do um, a slightly broken up wavy line pulling down from the base of the rushes just across that water there and that'll give you those reflections. Now an extra touch you can add in here once this is all dry is uh, a little bit of white gouache like you can see I'm using here. Uh, if your reeds end up being a bit too dark or if like me you painted your backdrop very dark and they don't stand out very much you can just add in a few simple lines like so. Uh, this is just going to create some highlights uh, amongst all that darker colour and just help the uh, the shape of your uh, reeds and rushes to look a little bit more defined against uh, that lovely dark background there. There we go, so that's mine. Uh, now it's all dried, I'm adding some more uh, pale gouache spatters because I thought a little bit of extra uh, colour here would be nice, some little pale white flowers dotted around this left side of the riverbank to complement the yellow and the pink that we've already got. And now along this side I'm spattering some white gouache which I've mixed with the gamboge hue to create uh, an opaque yellow which I'm spattering on a bit more lightly um, but a bit higher up and all over and everywhere and this is going to be for me a beautiful cloud of fireflies coming up from the river perhaps sending their lovely glow into the sky rising up from those lovely plants uh, and the flowers where perhaps they've been sleeping all day. So once all the spatters are dry, and don't worry, you can always uh, go back and add in some more once, uh, once you've done the rest of the painting, which is what I usually do, uh, it's time to just uh, add in those fence posts, which is what I like so much about the uh, photograph that I was working from, the reference photo, uh, is these lovely leaning fence posts, giving that extra little bit of detail into this landscape. You can see I'm just using my small round brush to paint them in, starting with some burnt umber uh, and then just finishing off with a little bit of lamp black to make sure that they stand up against the rest of the dark colours in this landscape. It's nice to add the lamp black in wet and wet as you can see I'm doing here, let it diffuse naturally and soften into that burnt umber so you get a really nice natural looking uh, sort of wood grain colour. You can see I'm keeping the darker colour, the lamp black, on the left of these posts because of course we've got that sun shining in from the right. Uh, and you can see I just used a tissue to dab out a little of the rich paint down here at the base of the posts because I want to um, uh, sort of settle them into the landscape by 
softening down those hard lines and adding a few extra reeds and grasses around the base of the posts, sort of going over them and just sort of really settling them into this landscape. So it's a nice simple touch to make uh, things like fence posts and gates and uh, sort of man-made objects like that look like they haven't just been plonked onto the surface of your landscape, just you want them to look like they've been sitting there for a while, they've settled in and the foliage has started growing up around them. So that's what I'm doing here, just adding a few more sort of grasses and stems with my uh, fine brush, um, adding a few lines coming down from some of these brighter yellow blooms as well, just to uh, give the impression of some stalks for these lovely flowers. You don't need to do too much, it's best left uh, as an impression rather than trying to sit there and draw every single line for every single flower. You just want the hint, just enough to give your viewer the impression of these lovely flowers blooming up from this darker surface. And here you can see that I'm just using again the fine point of my liner brush to draw in these uh, loose wires that are just holding those fence posts together. If you don't have a very fine brush or you don't feel very confident doing this, you can always use um, a black fine liner pen uh, as long as it's uh, got waterproof ink. And you can see I'm just adding a few more uh, spatters in here so we get some uh, light colour going over those fence posts, again sort of rooting them into the landscape. And quite honestly, I just love adding um, spatter detail to my painting, so I'm just going a little bit wild with it. Of course, this is uh, an entirely optional touch, but I do like the way that it makes paintings look. Uh, and now I'm just using, again, a fine brush to add in some distant bird shapes using lamp black. Now usually I add these birds as my finishing touch to the painting and as you can see here um, I did think this painting was finished so I've pulled all the tape off and got it set up to photograph and then I realised uh, the morning after that it needed a little bit of extra tweaking so I retaped it very roughly onto my board. It doesn't need to be heavily taped because we're only adding a few quick small details. This is the first of them, a little white gouache highlight across this fence. So you can see I'm using my really fine tip of my sword liner brush to add some highlights across the wires and then around the fence posts uh, just to add that little bit of definition and help them stand out against that quite dark background. And I think that really helps to pull the composition of this painting together. It takes a, um, a steady-ish hand, but the good thing about this highlight being quite loose uh, across these wires is that you don't need to follow the lines exactly, you just need to follow them roughly, just enough to give the impression of that last little hint of uh, light from the sun glinting off these wires and just bringing them into the fore a little bit, tracing the white colour uh, across the posts as well, and maybe adding uh, some white highlights down the side of the fence posts too. At this point I just decided to add some more white highlights around the posts and just in general in this foreground just to try and lighten it up a little bit. So this is what it looks like now that it's dried. Uh, really pleased with that little foreground extra detail so now I'm just darkening this hillside with some lamp black placed on as a glaze. This is me forgetting that I didn't have tape across the side so just pulling that little bit of colour out with some tissue. Uh, a glaze is just a really really light mixture of watercolour paint and water um, applied smoothly across an area of your painting that's already dry. So you can see I've just got lamp black and some water applied loosely across this distant hillside to darken it down. And now, <laughs> now it's finished. Uh, and I'm really pleased with how those finishing touches just have uh, seemed to bring this painting together, sort of darkening down the background and lighting out the foreground. 
Uh, I believe I may have added a couple of more splatters of white gouache off camera. I'm not sure at this point, probably knowing me. Um, but thank you any for everybody for watching anyway. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed painting this one. Uh, converting my own photograph into a piece of artwork is always really fun. Uh, it's always fun to make changes as well and seeing how many ways you can paint a photo that you love. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching. If you'd like to see some more video content from me that's not on YouTube, then please uh, follow the link below to my Patreon page where you'll find plenty of uh, videos and free use reference photos as well. Uh, but thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week wherever you are and whatever you're up to. And I wish you all a very happy painting.